She was a body without a name. For almost three decades, the identity of the dead woman found along Interstate 10 in the Florida Panhandle remained a mystery. But today, that mystery has been solved. We now know that the last known victim of long-haul trucker Keith Jesperson was Suzanne Kellenberg. Jesperson was known as the happy face killer because he would taunt the police after each of his kills with letters confessing to the killing and then signed with a smiley face, hence the name, the happy face killer. The mystery was solved through a rapidly developing area of forensic science known as forensic genetic genealogy. It first came on our radar screen when it was used back in 2018 to solve the case of another serial killer, the Golden State Killer. So what is forensic genetic genealogy? How does it work? And why should any of us care? Well, first, over 41 million people around the globe have voluntarily submitted their DNA profiles into various commercial databases. For many people, ancestry research and genealogy is a hobby. For others, it's the lure of learning something more about your own health, your future medical conditions that you might be predisposed to. All of that now easily findable for under $100 pick your commercial company, have them send you a test tube, you spit in the test tube, you seal that tube up, mail it off in the mail, and several weeks later, you get a complete DNA profile and you can go online on your account and now see various relatives that you may or may not have known anything about around the world whose DNA profile matches yours. And they'll even tell you this looks like a second cousin, a third cousin, a great grandparent, and so on and so on. And you can choose to share your DNA profile with those other potential relatives who they then can match and say, we, we seem to match on the maternal side or the paternal side. And all of that's there voluntarily posited inside these databases. So that's all encouraging news, good news for those who want that to happen. So where do the police come into this picture? Well, that information is out there, open source, available to them as well. So if, let's say, at a crime scene, they've collected a DNA sample from either an unidentified victim, usually in a murder or rape is where this, this scientific application is used, or they have an unknown suspect where they've collected his or her DNA from the crime scene. They can then go to those commercial databases and upload that DNA profile and let the database go to work, just as it does for you or me if we sign up for such a thing. And they'll find relatives out there, that second or third cousin, brother, sister, mother, grandparent. That's where the detective work then begins. They'll actually look at the family names in the database associated with that family tree, see if it rings a bell with their investigative work. They might actually then go and knock on some doors and ask people, does this suspect sound familiar to you? And even as in an attempt to get closer and closer to the suspect, they might ask certain family members to provide their own DNA samples and see if they match even more closely to the DNA from the crime scene. The good news here, this technique has solved over 300 cases around the world, and it's rapidly developing into the state-of-the-art technology in solving cold cases around the world. So where do you and I come into this picture? Well, if you are already part of one of these commercial well-known databases, you see them advertised on TV and other places, or if you're thinking about perhaps joining this database to learn more about your own heritage or your own health conditions, here's what you should be thinking about. First, read the fine print. What are the details about that particular company's policy regarding sharing with law enforcement? You may or may not 
want law enforcement accessing your DNA. See what their policy is. So for example, the current policy of a company called 23andMe is to not share your information with law enforcement unless they are compelled legally to do so, meaning usually the service of a subpoena. Secondly, understand that if you're really into helping law enforcement solve crimes like this, there's a database for you. It's called DNA Solve, and they exist solely to provide DNA profiles and help law enforcement solve crime. So that's an option as well. But read the fine print wherever you're, you're deciding to go because you have options. You can opt out of sharing your information with law enforcement. You can opt out and choose not to share your DNA with anyone else in that database and just benefit from the genealogy research and or the medical research that comes back to you by letting the company see your DNA. Those are choices you should be looking at and making. Don't go into this blindly. Lastly, you, you may have heard of a recent breach of cybersecurity at 23andMe. It's been in the press. And the story is, at least what we're told, is that certain threat actors were able to get into 23andMe's database using passwords already hacked from somewhere else. As you know, there have been major hacks across uh, the United States and the world. We're often receiving notices that our various personal identifying information has been hacked. Well, that's where these threat actors got passwords from. And then they rather smartly started running those passwords against um, the uh, database of the commercial company, in this case, 23andMe, to see if they could get into anybody's uh, genetic information. And they did and they were able to obtain members' uh, genetic profiling or ancestry or DNA information, particularly within uh, a segment of that database that has to do with sharing with relatives or relative finding. So be aware, you don't need to do that if you're going to enter into this kind of membership. Things to think about, forensic genetic genealogy, solving crimes, that's good. Um, police understanding how best to use this, this technology that allows all of us to learn more about our ancestors, our genetic makeup, often eye-opening results um, where people learn that they're not 100% this or 90% that. They often find that their genetics are far more diverse. All of that really good stuff. But there's bad stuff when bad guys can get a hold of your DNA and genetic information. That's what it looks like happened at the recent 23andMe breach. So we want the good guys to get what we want them to get. We don't want bad guys to get what they want and use it for nefarious uh, uh, purposes. So what's my advice to you? Get smart on this. Use different passwords at different applications so that if it's hacked, your password is stolen in one application, in one area of your life, it can't be applied and targeted against another app or another area of your life. That's my advice. Stay smart and stay safe. Thanks for watching. Those of you who have followed me for a while have probably noticed that this sort of content and format is new for me. I'm thinking about creating more content focusing on what's on my mind and what's on your mind. I'd like to hear from you. So just like, subscribe, or drop a comment letting me know what kind of content you're wanting on this channel. If you have any questions about the FBI or current events, I'd love to receive those as well. And who knows, maybe I'll answer your question in an upcoming episode.